Hello to you all, John Greenwald here with theblackvault.com. I'm posting this video as a response to the avalanche of dialogue that started after my last video. That dialogue was in part good, but also in part bad. But I wanted to speak to all of you to give you an update and hopefully maybe even answer a question or two that you have had since I posted my breakdown of Luis Elizondo's IG complaint. As that video was playing for the first time, I was spending the day with my son at the arcade. I never like missing my YouTube premieres, that way I can spend a lot of time with you guys, but time with my son means more than anything. So I left my office and checked in a few times when I could just to say hi. But while at the arcade, I got a text message on my cell phone from a friend. I was told Mr. Elizondo was retweeting a lawyer and that lawyer was seemingly warning me directly about my video and defaming Mr. Elizondo. Let me read his exact words. Surely hope you don't defame Lou Elizondo. It is well documented that he was the director of ATIP and any participation in a plan to cast doubt on that hashtag truth is a knowing effort to defame and sow disinformation. It's legally actionable. Mr. Elizondo retweeted that not once, but twice. Mr. Elizondo stated first, It's nice working with professionals. Thank you, Todd. And then a second tweet 14 minutes later. I was the director of ATIP. It has been well documented, and I have been the subject of a campaign of defamatory disinformation by multiple parties. Again, my thanks to Todd McMurtry. Now, one thing to note. My video was still premiering, and what that means is it was playing for the first time. Checking the timestamp, it appears my video was only about 37 minutes into playing of the admittedly long three hour total runtime. In other words, it seemed coordinated. This all seemed strategic, and it seemed planned. All of which is fine and not an indicator of wrongdoing on the part of the attorney or Mr. Elizondo but they had no idea what I was even saying. The video wasn't even done yet. Their rebuttals about Mr. Elizondo running ATIP pretty much had nothing to do with my video dissecting the claims that he made in his IG complaint. But they floated the D word anyway numerous times, worked in the word disinformation as well, and then Mr. Elizondo retweeted it to his 93,000 plus followers, twice which resulted in quite the firestorm. Now, let me say I can take the heat and insults from that crowd thrown at me in tweet form. I've done it for a long time, so there's no problem there. But that wasn't the part that bothered me about this entire situation. In my view, I did not defame anyone. And to float those words is not only telling, but incredibly damaging to the entire investigative process for someone like me and for people like all of us. We are all on an individual journey, our own, each of us, to discover the truth, whatever that may be. My path took me to vet the claims of a former taxpayer-paid government employee who made claims about a taxpayer-funded program or effort, whatever he wants to now call it. In his complaint, he utilized my work and in my view, altered it to make accusations against other taxpayer paid employees with, within the Pentagon and the De Department of Defense. Albeit my work was a very small part of his IG complaint, it was still a very big claim to make. And in my personal opinion, the story was altered. If it was not, I think that we should ask for more evidence. Am I not allowed to question any of that? What country do I live in if I can't question all those claims, not only made in the complaint, but others made in tweets and podcasts by Mr. Elizondo? What country do I live in where it is wrong to use verifiable evidence, vetting the claims of someone I once paid for through my taxpayer dollars to even have a job? What country do I live in where my efforts to bring as much verifiable evidence to the table along with properly labeling and expressing my opinion is legal threat worthy veiled or otherwise to be thrown at me on Twitter in tweet form. The tweets from an attorney and Mr. Elizondo posted online 
riled up a digital mob before my video was even done playing. The result was a digital lynching by a small but noisy group of Mr. Elizondo's biggest supporters. Anyone that has a following and has followers should be careful when posting such legal jargon and veiled accusations. The result is much more damaging than one might think, but sadly, I'm starting to think that was the intent. Although Mr. Elizondo's attorney has every right to tweet at me, and Mr. Elizondo has every right to do the same, in this process they are revealing an enormous problem in today's world. And that is, not everything should be met with a lawyer, veiled legal threats, or posts that I am sure all parties involved would know would rile up a digital mob of supporters. Rather, just attack my information. If you choose to make public claims, then expect feedback from the public. It's up to you to respond or not. If you feel the desire, answer the questions I posed. Show evidence to the contrary of what I showed. Prove me wrong. Heck, I'll let Mr. Elizondo or anyone do it on my own show, as I've already proven in the past, not only with Mr. Elizondo, but others who I have spoken out against as well. I'm not afraid of being proven wrong, especially on my own show, or having a, press a pressing question answered adequately. But if he chooses not to do it, then don't. All of which is everyone's right to do. But nothing I did warranted the flashing of an attorney or dropping words like defame, defamation, and disinformation, especially when a digital mom is clearly foaming at the mouth for more digital ammunition, ammunition to use. The flashing of his attorney gave them all just that. The bottom line, I did nothing wrong. I exercised my freedom to information. I exercised my right to express my opinion. I vetted taxpayer-paid people and taxpayer-funded programs and posed questions that I would 100% defend under oath in a courtroom. None of this, none of what I did, is in the legal definition of defamation or sue-worthy. It's not even legal threat-worthy. Anyone who decides to talk the defamation talk about what I did is telling the general public more about themselves than they are about me. I know Mr. Elizondo's biggest supporters out there won't watch this video, and if they do, they will continue to throw rocks and sling mud in the name of disclosure as they won't actually listen to what I have to say, they just think I'm out to get them. But I made this explanation to tell all of you, in case you had any reservation about what in the world John's doing, so I could tell you this is not about Luis Elizondo the man. It never has been. As I've said numerous times, I actually like the guy. But what this is about are the claims of a former DOD intelligence agent, one that Americans paid for to have a job. And it's about his claims doing taxpayer-funded research or running taxpayer-funded programs and creating taxpayer-funded property that is that of the people. We own these programs they create, and if somebody who was on the inside and running it all for nearly a decade, and let me add, someone who kept it all secret, a secret from us for all that time, we have a right to question it once the information is out in the open. We paid for it. Just because someone tells us they will always tell us the truth, newsflash, it doesn't actually mean they still will. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't challenge them or the stories or the claims. The absolute truth will not be harmed by anything anyone throws at it. Not a question not an opinion, not anything. The absolute truth will survive it all. I will not be intimidated from doing what I have done for 26 years. I have a long history of questioning claims by the government, claims from politicians, claims of FOIA offices, claims of fo former DOD personnel, and the list goes on. That is what the Black Vault is all about. And despite what some noisy haters on Twitter say, I will continue to do it. I will continue to show you all a glimpse into my journey, trying to figure this all out with you. 
and I won't apologize for pushing for answers or asking for more evidence. We should all be doing that, even if we think 150% of what Mr. Elizondo claims is 150% legit. Keep pushing for answers, because I assure you, we don't have them all, especially not about this. I've always said, and I'll say it again, I don't claim to always be right. I don't want you to agree with everything I say, because the Black Vault is not an echo chamber, nor do I want it to be. It's a place to see, share, and reflect on ideas, evidence, theories, and data on all sorts of issues. And nothing, and no one, will keep me from running the Black Vault for the next 26 years, and hopefully far beyond, to give you all a place where you won't be intimidated to share your ideas, or learn from others, or challenge your own beliefs. But most of all, and I mean this, most of all, I want you all to have a place where you are motivated to ask questions and never be afraid to do so, no matter how many attorneys they have to tweet at you. It's your right. It's our right. And I hope none of us are met with enough opposition to forget that.